20. Oh, oh. Yes, sir. So I've been able to go a bunch of town halls because I mean, I'm Hannah's dad. I've never asked a question to you. <laughs> but so I've heard a lot of candidates say different things. And I've been to two Chris Christie events. He said that you say different things in Iowa that you say in New Hampshire. So for Mr. Christie, for the cameras, I would like you to say exactly what your stance is on abortion. Happy to. So first of all, let's start from the beginning and then I'll get to, the, to Chris's part. Abortion has been something that has divided our country for way too long. I think abortion is personal for every woman and man in America and it needs to be treated that way. I personally am unapologetically pro-life, not because the Republican Party tells me to be, but because my husband was adopted and I had trouble having both of my children. Having said that, I don't judge anyone for being pro-choice any more than I want you to judge me for being pro-life. But let's talk about how we got here. Prior to 1973, you had 46 state laws on abortion. And in 1973, unelected justices threw out those 46 state laws and said abortion anytime, anywhere, for any reason. I think a wrong was made right when the unelected justices said that was not our place to do, this should be in the hands of the people. So that's what's happened and that's the right place for it. Some states have gone more pro-life, I welcome that. Some states have gone more on the choice side. I wish that wasn't the case, but the people decided. So it's always a good thing when the people are deciding. But when it comes to a federal law, which is what's being debated at the presidential, they haven't told you the truth. In order to have a federal law, you have to have a majority of the House, 60 Senate votes, and a signature of a president. We haven't had 60 Republican senators in over 100 years. We might have 45 pro-life senators. So no Republican president can ban abortions any more than a Democrat president can get rid of those state laws. So what do we do? Is there a place for a federal law? I think there is. But the only way is if we have consensus. So can't we agree on just banning late-term abortions? Can't we agree on encouraging adoptions and good quality adoptions? Can't we agree that doctors and nurses who don't believe in abortion shouldn't have to perform them? Can't we agree that contraception should be accessible? And can't we agree that no state law should say to a woman who's had an abortion that she's going to jail or getting the death penalty? Let's just start there. They have demonized this issue for too long. I'm going to humanize this issue. Our goal is how do you save as many babies as you can and support as many moms as you can. I had a roommate in college who was raped. I wouldn't wish on anyone to go through what she went through wondering if she was pregnant. Everybody has a story. Let's be respectful of their story. So when it comes to my friend Chris, and he is a friend of mine, when it comes to that, he's saying I said one thing in Iowa and one thing in New Hampshire. Well, it's because I was asked two different questions. The question asked in Iowa was, if you were governor of South Carolina and they sent you a six-week bill, would you sign it? And I said, yes, if the people decided on six weeks, I would have signed it. But if we're talking about a federal law, I'm not going to put you through that unless we have 60 votes and we find consensus. It's two totally different things. That's not having two different views. That's actually very consistent. But what I will promise you is the days of demonizing that issue are over. Or you guys have to raise your hands too because I don't know where you are. Oh, there you are. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I am a next-gen pastor, and um, I work with young people all the way up to 26. And I would like to know if there's anything that you think that, the, that a president could do to help with the high suicide attempt rate, the depression rate, the mental health that is happening to our children. It is devastating and um, like as a youth, someone who works with youth, I feel like my hands are tied because 
I go with them to the hospital and they sit in a cot and they wait in the hallway for 20 hours for a 15 minute iPad conversation with somebody who's not even there. And they send them home and say, you're okay. And then they're back the next day because they attempt it again. Mental health is the cancer America has refused to deal with. And it's gotten even worse since COVID. We're seeing more anxiety, more stress, more depression than we've ever seen before, especially in young people. One in three people have a mental health issue. But if treated, they can live a perfectly normal life. The problem is we don't have enough therapists. We don't have enough mental health clinics. And if you can't get one of those, if you fall into some sort of depression and mental health issue, you could fall into addiction, trying to calm the pain. We don't have enough addiction centers in this country. And if you happen to be lucky enough to get one of those three things, insurance doesn't pay for it. We have got to start dealing with mental health as the cancer that it is. And that means quickly making sure that we do everything we can to get more therapists, making sure we build up more mental health centers, make sure that we do more telehealth so that people can get their um, attention in real time, and make sure that we really focus on addictions. We're losing millions of people because they're just not being treated, and we can't stand for that anymore. So we'll work hard to do that, and it has to be a priority. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mrs. Haley, it's so great to have you back. Thank you. Um, I, have, you I love the way you talk about hard truth, so here comes the hard truth. I totally agree with you about President Trump's chaotic, the, what he brings to our country at this point with the chaotic behavior. Um, but the hard truth is that he's got, in the polls, he's got well over 50 percent. And I'm wondering if it came to it, which I hope it doesn't, but if it comes to it and he becomes president again, would you consider the vice presidency? It's not that big of a deal of a question, I'm just saying. Because what you have to know is I don't play for second. I've never played for second.